Hello friends, it's Jessica from Three Rivers Homestead coming to you from Northwest Ohio. And in this week's video, as usual, I'm gonna be sharing with you some of the projects that we were doing around the homestead in the garden, in the kitchen, and just um, as a mother, a busy mother who's homeschooling and homesteading, all of the adventures that we were on this week. Now, as I mentioned, I am from Northwest Ohio. So many of you have had put comments on previous videos asking if we are okay and if we were affected by the tornadoes that came through on Thursday evening. We are safe and we are in okay. Um, a community about 15 miles south of us was hit very hard. So if you could keep Northwest Ohio in your prayers, there is going to be a lot of um, work to be done in the coming months for that community to heal and it hits very close to home and so we have just been um, checking in on, on people that we know in our community that may have been affected and so far everybody is safe and okay which is a blessing so thank you to all of you who checked in on us we are okay on the homestead it is now egg season the ducks and chickens are laying in abundance and we are harvesting nearly two dozen eggs a day so we will have lots of videos coming in the future on how we use up those eggs the problem with this time of year is that it is very muddy it is also mud season in northwest ohio so very few of those eggs that come in from the coops are clean enough for things like water glassing. So we are just eating a lot of eggs with all of our meals. And I love that because I think it's the perfect breakfast. I love to pair it with whatever home-baked goodies I'm making for the kids. And so it is wonderful to now reach that point of the year where we can do that again. It is also the time of year where the garden is just calling for me like a siren song but the housework also needs to be addressed because it has been a long winter of being cooped up 10 people in a house and so what I'm trying to do at this time of year is balance my desire to just get outside especially like last week when it was 70 degrees and sunny out uh, what I have to do is force myself to do housework before I will allow myself to get outside and just that is what I have to say in my mind. You can't go play in the garden until you do at least 30, 45 minutes of housework. And that's the way I'm trying to balance everything that needs to be done at this point of the year. So we're definitely in spring cleaning mode and we are also in garden prep mode. And that means that canning season is starting to come to an end. You guys know that my policy is whenever I accumulate enough empty jars to fill a batch in my canner, I try to refill them before I take the jars back to the cellar. But now is the time where I need to kind of let that rule go allow the um, jars to kind of empty so that they can accumulate for this year's gardening season and also free up that time, spending less time in the kitchen doing canning work and that gives me more time to do garden work. So we are working on our plant starts here in the kitchen. This is my grow light setup and I'm gonna be sharing later on at the end of this video the new seeds that we planted this year, some of the tomato varieties that we're growing, we also have peppers growing, um, loofah, broccoli, lots of goodies. One final preservation project from last year that really needs to be done is finishing up the garlic. This garlic is starting to go soft and it's starting to sprout. So it needs to be preserved before it all goes bad. So I'm just breaking apart all of these heads of garlic and putting the cloves in a baking dish with a little bit of olive oil. I'm also filling another baking dish with some leftover sweet potatoes from storage. We're gonna roast all of this up and get it preserved. Now, some years we do the tedious work of sitting down and peeling all of this garlic so that I can preserve it in its raw form. And it is one of my least favorite jobs. I usually hire all of the children to come in and help me and we spend a whole afternoon just peeling garlic. And it's just not my favorite thing to do and I don't think that the children particularly enjoy it either. So this year I decided to work smarter, not harder, and I roasted it all first. And that is because not only is the flavor of roasted garlic really delicious, but when you roast the garlic, it just slips right out of those skins 
with no effort whatsoever. So this was a huge time saver for me. Um, the children were so busy with their schoolwork this week. We are really just hitting a part of the school year where um, some of my older children couldn't afford to lose a whole day peeling garlic for me. So this just saved us all some time and worked out wonderfully. I got my food processor filled with all of that roasted garlic. We went ahead and processed that together into somewhat of a paste. And I have decided that I'm going to freeze dry that to turn it into a roasted garlic powder. I've done videos for you guys before where I freeze the garlic puree, and I do love to do that, but we are out of garlic powder, so I thought this would be a great way to preserve it this time. And since that wasn't enough garlic to fill an entire load in the freeze dryer, I have three empty trays that I need to fill, so that's what I'm going to do with these sweet potatoes. Now these were cooked to about 80%, and I'm just chopping them up into little, I guess, fry shapes. And we're going to freeze dry these and they're going to become snacks. They're going to replace, if you've ever had store-bought, maybe veggie straws, um, things like that, that aren't necessarily the healthiest snack object. This tastes similar to that. They are crispy. Um, they're full of, you know, the nutrients from the sweet potato. And they're just a lovely, crunchy treat to have when you want a, a crispy snack. So that's three of our trays. I decided to fill my last tray with just some beef bone broth that I had in the fridge. It's very um, jelly, you can see that, lots of gelatin in that, and that's gonna be a nice powdered shelf staple beef broth for us. So this took about 24 hours in the freeze dryer, and once it was done, I'm gonna go ahead and unload the freeze dryer, and we're gonna get to packaging this stuff up. Now, sometimes if things are going into our long-term food storage, I'll package these items into mylar with an oxygen absorber and it will be packed away but all of these items i think i'm going to keep upstairs we're going to use these up rather quickly like i said i'm out of garlic powder so i'm just going to add that to the spice cabinet and then these sweet potatoes are for snacking right now so we're just going to fill them in a gallon jar and put them in the pantry and i have a feeling the children will probably gobble these up by the end of the week so just because canning season is kind of ending for me for a while, there's a pause on that until harvest start to come in. It doesn't mean I'm not preserving food. I find the freeze dryer to be a really easy method that doesn't require a lot of energy and time on my part. I just have to get it prepped and on the trays and then the machine does the work for me. So we will still be preserving leftovers and little bits of things here and there. Um, that I work in the kitchen to make, but I think a lot of the big canning days are going to be on pause until probably late June, early July um, when things start really coming in from the garden. This bone broth can be rehydrated or just added to other soups to thicken things up and then to powder up our garlic puree here, we are going to put it back into the food processor now and that will just make it into a garlic powder. If you don't want it a really fine powder, you can just kind of mince it a little bit and that will give you larger chunks of garlic. I'm trying to powder it down pretty um, finely and then we can use that in a lot of our meals here. So not bad for a very minimal amount of effort and i um, very happy to have all of this being added to the shelves. I need to make sure to label it because I have a lot of powders in my spice cabinet that are a similar color and I don't want to get those mixed up. So there we go. Um, no oxygen absorber is needed for these if I'm going to use them up here in the next couple months. If it were going to be longer than that, we would um, store them differently. Now speaking of garlic, this year's batch of garlic is peeking out through its lovely bed of straw that we put there to protect it over the winter. But now that the sun is out, our garlic is reaching for the sun and coming through that straw, we can remove some of that mulch. It doesn't need quite so much. All of the winter sown jugs that we planted several weeks ago are starting to sprout and very excited here to um, see all of this new life starting to grow and start this year's garden. We can see the asparagus is popping out of the beds. I love asparagus. Strawberry leaves are starting to form. Lots of the perennial herbs are peeking up from the soil. 
and I have so much work to do in the garden, you guys. It is such a busy time of year. One quick project that I was able to get to this week was cleaning up this stinging nettle that was somehow starting to form here in the corner of this bed. I discovered a little bit of nettle over here last summer. Ironically, it was the week that I was attacked by my bees, if you guys remember that. And I had sustained over 40 bee stings from uh, my beehive. And then just a few days later, I was out in the garden and accidentally touched this stinging nettle and had <laughs> that whole rash that I was dealing with at the same time as the bee stings. And so somehow I must not have pulled it all out at that point and it popped back up. So Nettle is actually very good for you. It's a wonderful tea. I like to drink it during pregnancy and when I'm nursing babies. So this is actually a weed that I'm happy to have around here, but I just don't want it in unexpected places throughout the garden. I'm transplanting it here to the center of my perennial herb bed. And so it's somewhere where I'm not going to accidentally brush against it and it can grow and flourish here if it wants to. And then I can harvest it later this year to make some tea. So I'm hoping that it will survive being transplanted. And if not, I'm sure other patches of nettle are going to show up somewhere else <laughs> on the property and I can just try to transplant that later on. My three little helpers here were out enjoying this beautiful day with me and they are enjoying turning over logs and looking for earthworms. So, you know, little boys <laughs> loving to collect any kind of insects and bugs. They're putting them in these jugs and then taking them over either to let the chickens enjoy or they're dumping them into my garden beds, which I really appreciate. So um, lots of fun outdoors, just enjoying the weather this week. Back inside, it's time to do some kitchen work. So one of the cuts of meat that I have been avoiding using is the beef spare ribs. Now, spare ribs are a very difficult cut of meat. They're not one of my favorites. I find them to be super fatty. The meat can be rather tough. So we're, I'm going to show you how I do prepare them. Um, and so the first thing I'm doing is getting them in a uh, pan there, and we are browning them. To another bowl here, I'm going to add some freeze-dried onions. I have some freeze-dried celery also. And the great thing about freeze-dried vegetables is you can rehydrate with anything you want. So instead of plain water, I'm rehydrating with some home canned tomato juice. And so those vegetables will just absorb the nutrition and the flavor from that tomato juice. I figure why add plain water when you have an option to add something else. The next thing I'm going to do is just chop a few carrots. I think I did maybe five carrots here. We're going to add that to the vegetable mix. And then I had just a little bit of cabbage that was left over from a different meal this week sitting in the fridge. So I figured why not add that to my bowl here to get that used up. We're just going to stir that together and let it sit for a little bit so that those vegetables rehydrate. In the meantime, we are browning all of those spare ribs, and as they finish, I'm adding them to my huge uh, roasting pan here because it was quite a lot of spare ribs, so we need to fill it the whole way. And then after the spare ribs were all done, pouring a little bit of beef broth into the bottom of the pan here, we're going to deglaze it and try to get all of that extra flavor from the spare ribs so that it isn't wasted. And then to this liquid, we can just throw in our bowl of vegetables and kind of get those started cooking. But first, I'm adding a couple cubes of pureed garlic scapes. And we just need to get those melted a little bit before we add the rest of the vegetables. So we're just going to get those in to our pan here, get them to start softening here, mix together the garlic and all of those flavors. I decided to add a little bit of balsamic vinegar and then in the meantime while that's cooking we're going to just salt and pepper our spare ribs really well and then I decided to add a few herbs from the spice cabinet. First thing I'm going to add is some ground thyme. Just going to sprinkle a pretty heavy amount of that over the top and then I am I have some homegrown sage from last year's garden that I had freeze dried that we're just going to kind of grab some of those leaves and sprinkle them over the top. From here, our vegetable mix is close to getting ready. Um, now, normally I would add some tomato paste from a can, 
but I have a lot of freeze-dried tomato powder left, which kind of serves the same purpose. So just sprinkling in some freeze-dried tomato powder, and that will absorb some of the extra liquid in this and kind of thicken it and give it some more tomato flavor. So before I open up more cans of tomato paste, I'm trying to use up the tomato powder from last year that isn't in mylar. Now that we're done, I can just spoon that vegetable mixture over the top of the meat. I'm very um, grateful for this roaster because there just isn't a crock pot that is big enough for a large family for meals like this. So the roasting pan comes in very handy. Just one more little quick salt and peppering before we get the lid on and get this in the um, roaster. So we're going to set it to about 275, 300 degrees and let this go all day. I did cover the holes in the top so that the steam can't evaporate. That would dry out the meat a little too much. So later, closer to dinner, I grabbed a couple jars of canned potatoes. We're going to get those warmed up as a side dish. And then this is what the meal looks like in the roaster. It is time to get it prepared for my family to eat it. Now, another reason I'm not a huge fan of spare ribs is that it really isn't an easy meal for the little ones to eat themselves. Um, it does require a lot of work for me to get it ready for their plates. So um, the older children can cut it off the bone themselves and find the meat. But my little ones, especially the ones that are kind of picky and don't like a lot of gristle on their meat, um, I need to be careful to cut it all up, cut off any excess pieces of gristle, so that they will actually eat what is on their plate. So I am going to cut pretty much all of the spare ribs here for the little children, and then this is how I plated it up for the older children so that they can cut their own. So that was a yummy meal this week that I thought I would share with you. Now it is time to start my tomato seeds for the year. Gabriel was sitting in the kitchen talking to me, and so I told him that he could be my helper here. He's going to label my cups as I plant the seeds. So why don't I show you all of the different varieties of tomatoes that we are planting this year. I'll show you each packet and then talk to you a little bit about why. So pink jazz here are some of my favorite tomatoes. I think they're extremely prolific and I love the flavor of them. So that is the tomato that I planted the most of this year. Now, the next favorite from last year was the Solar Flare tomatoes. They produced the largest tomatoes I think I have ever seen. This is one of them. It was over two pounds. I think it was like two pounds, two ounces. So we are doing a lot of those this year in the hopes that we can recreate those epic tomatoes from last year. So I'll just show you the rest of the packets here. Most of these I'm just planting because I have the seeds and you guys know my philosophy in life is just to kind of use up what I have. Every little bit counts. And so before a lot of these seed packets of tomatoes go bad and don't germinate as well, I want to get them used up. And so a lot of these are items that I planted last year or the year before, and they're just ones that do really well. I didn't buy any new tomato seeds this year except for those cherry tomatoes from MI Gardener that I showed you because um, we didn't have any other cherry tomato seeds. We're not huge cherry tomato fans here. I eat them. The two oldest boys eat them, and Adam will sometimes eat them, but none of the little ones love cherry tomatoes, so we don't need very many of those plants. My goal for tomatoes this year is to basically have enough to can tomato sauce for our pasta meals, a little bit of salsa. It, we don't can salsa for fresh eating because my kids don't prefer it to store-bought salsa, but I do like to have a little bit of salsa for um, using as a marinade, I guess, with things like crockpot chicken. And But the main reason I'm growing tomatoes this year is to make chili base. I found that Last year we had chili, you know, at least once a week from maybe starting in October all the way through um, about the end of February. And so a lot of the canning that I'm doing this year is focusing on having enough chili base to do that again. So very excited to have the start of my tomato garden going. We went ahead and added it to the grow lights here. You can see the loofah that we started last week has germinated. Lots of beautiful broccoli babies starting here. 
the tomatoes or the pe um, peppers, I'm sorry, were very slow to germinate, but they are starting to come up now that the weather has turned warm. I love seeing this year's garden starting to come to life. So that's it for this week's video. It was just um, a really busy week with the kids schooling and activities. So I was happy to get a little bit of work around the house and in the garden done on top of all the schoolwork and extracurriculars that we accomplished. Once again, thank you for all of you that checked in on us. Please continue to keep Northwest Ohio in your prayers as the communities around me um, continue to heal from the tornadoes that came through. Bye, friends.